Christopher Dora's Uncomfortable Truths, Chapter 12. Lisa and Monica sat at the kitchen table having a cup of tea. It was obvious from Lisa's facial expression that their conversation was very intense. Lisa hoped that Monica could share some insight into her uneasiness about her and Wade's relationship. Monica finally asked, What exactly do you think is going on with Wade? You want me to be honest? Lisa replied. Monica realized that this was a vulnerable moment for Lisa, so she calmly said, Well, I don't think you drove over here for nothing. It's obvious that something is deeply troubling you, and if you feel like I can help in any way, then I'm here to support you. Lisa's eyes began to well up with water, and it wasn't long before tears streamed down her face. She finally mustered the strength and said, I truly believe that Wade is cheating on me. Monica quickly Ooh. covered her mouth in shock and replied, Girl, Wade loves you. I just think he is committed to helping so many folks that he may be taking his time with you for granted. But I don't think it necessarily involves another woman. Lisa wasn't buying the story that Monica was trying to convince her of, and her sadness quickly turned into anger. Her voice escalated and she blurted, I'm his damn woman. And don't you think I have sense enough to know when my man is stepping out on me? Calm down, Monica insisted. She knew that this was a touchy subject, and she also knew that she was part of the problem and not the solution. How can you say calm down? How would you feel if you thought Trevor was cheating on you? Lisa replied. Monica took a deep breath and was silent for a minute while she thought about what to say next. She didn't want to keep debating Wade's infidelity knowing that she was part of the deception. Monica simply said, Lisa, I just know that sometimes we as women can overreact, so all I want from you is to not jump to hasty decisions and ruin what you and Wade have built. I do love Wade and want a future with him, but I would not accept any bullshit just to be in a relationship. And if I do find out another woman is getting this loving, then I'm going to blow. Lisa stopped talking because she felt herself reaching a level of anger that wasn't healthy. Monica's phone rang and she was glad because Lisa was starting to make her nervous. She fumbled with the phone once she saw it was Wade's number. She tried to send the voicemail but accidentally put it on speaker. It's me, and I was wondering if the coast was clear for us to finish where we left off, Wade asked. Monica was speechless as she looked over at Lisa with a strange look on her face. Meanwhile, back at the church, Bishop Walker sat in the pew of the church in deep thought. He was in so much of a trance that Deacon Jones had to call his name twice to get his attention. Oh, I'm sorry, Deacon Jones. I didn't even hear you walk up, Bishop said as he stood up to shake his hand. No problem, Bishop. I know with your level of responsibility that your mind stays preoccupied, Deacon Jones replied as they sat down. Bishop shook his head as he stared at Deacon Jones with a disturbed look on his face. So Bishop, where has you so troubled? Deacon Jones asked. Bishop sighed and replied, It's Deacon Wade. I don't know how much longer I can ignore the rumors about Wade's indigressions with the females in this church. And to think he's been considered to become the next pastor of this congregation. Deacon Jones looked surprised and softly said, I had no idea it had gotten out of control. I mean, you hear a rumor or two, but I never gave it much thought and believed he was looking to finally settle down. Bishop Walker nodded his head and said, Yeah, that's what I had hoped, but that's not the only thing that's going on. What else, Bishop? Deacon Jones curiously asked. There was a large amount of money that came up missing from the church funds. Bishop replied with a distraught look on his face. Deacon Jones quickly asked, Are you saying that Wade had something to do with that? Bishop shrugged his shoulders and replied, I hope not, but I do know we need to figure out something before we lose more members and for that matter, more church funds. Deacon Jones was shocked, but he assured Bishop that he had his full support. They ended their conversation and Bishop walked Deacon Jones to the front entrance. Deacon Jones opened the door to leave and Keisha stood there with a distraught look on her face. Bishop grabbed her by the hand and quickly said, What's wrong, my dear? Keisha looked at both men and finally said, I need to report improper conduct by one of your deacons. Who? Bishop asked with a peculiar look on his face. Deacon Wade. Keisha replied with an intense look on her face. 
Bishop looked at Deacon Jones as he shook his head in disgust. He then faced Keisha and said, I'm sorry, and I'll gladly take a statement from you.